Hi, this is Bernie Kobach. I'm, I'm an American in Cashel County, Tipperary, Ireland. And if you're watching me on Google+, Plus, or maybe on YouTube, Stroke Top Cold, you'll see an opening shot above the Earth of some of the work that the uh, space shuttle astronauts do. Now what I'm doing is uh, looking at this picture, which is inside the Sunday Times magazine here on the 3rd of July in my back garden because I thought it'd be interesting to see could I use the Sony Ericsson Xperia Arc to give you a quick run through, a 10 minute run through of papers that are on my patio. And you know what? It's an American slant to the papers. So I'll give this slant, I normally give it all on YouTube or on my blog www.insideview.e or on audioboo.fm stroke top goal. Lots of stuff concerning jobs in the, the local area, uh, jobs in Ireland for qualified graduates and there's a job story inside the Irish Times concerning internship and jobs. Let me get to it. Um, local paper, local jobs. I live in Cashel and lots of contractors giving their walking papers by a Johnson & Johnson subsidiary because it's closing down. The uh, pharma school called uh, Alza Cordis is closing down. Down the street Clonmel has a junction festival and closer down the street uh, Cashel has this thing called the uh, EU Rural Charter. 300 delegates from around the EU are enjoying the beautiful warm weather. You hear the birds, they're loving it too. Inside the paper, now what, what's Eric Schmidt have to say? Well, he visited Ireland, pointing out that it was a big problem trying to find suitable Irish graduates, people that have skills in maths and science. I don't know if you can see this, uh, but this phone's pretty good. It's saying to me through the uh, little viewfinder that it's got a macro viewing level. I love that. So we'll go through the paper, have a look at a few other macro viewing level stuff. This is a pretty big, big macro thing. You know, in Ireland, you don't pay for water. In Ireland, you don't pay for property tax. So there's a gigantic fight going on. Got an environment minister that wants to have people pay for using the water. And then you have other people involved in the government who want to urge that, uh, well, people just don't pay it. Civil disobedience. Here's the story, though. There's a, there was an anti-bin charge campaign, so people didn't have to pay for rubbish before. But the polluter pays book took over, and now people are actually both struggling with bills and paying for their rubbish to be collected. Don't know whether the same thing's going to work with the uh, water. But before I turn the page, let me tell you what. Lots of people to understand where the water leaks are are older civil servants. And when they, when they just leave the job because they retire, a whole lot of uh, information about where the uh, meters are located and where the leaks are located that are going to go retiring with them. So Ireland's in for a real mess when it comes to getting money out of water. But Ireland's not in the same boat as Greece. That's the story by Marie Duran. Greece has navigated difficult waters, but in Ireland's case, we're actually meeting the IMF targets, fiscal targets, which means that unlike Greece, the Irish economy is actually on a road to recovery. That'd be good. I want to see how this goes up on uh, YouTube and how this goes up on Google+. Plus. Adrian Weckler is interested in that, I'm sure. I'm not sure Adrian's on uh, Google+, Plus, so I'll give an invitation to see if you can see this. He writes an article about new law giving labels a victory, music labels. Basically, why is it happening? Well, why, why can the labels simply uh, pass over requests to block a website? The reality is political, Adrian says. Labor Party has a, you know, basically enthusiastic support enthusiastic support of the music labels he wants to do what the labels want to do Fina Gale says look <laughs> just stop calling us and vote for other packages in coalition so what's going to happen if I have a whole bunch of music up on my website I can expect that uh, six apart is going to be told to take it off okay Irish Times paper of record uh, I like the Times more than any other Irish paper that's running into problems though financial as you would expect Inside the paper is some pretty interesting stuff about this concept of inter internship. It's written by Ross Perlin, and he, he wrote this book called Intern Nation. Unpaid internships, a, broad, a job bridge to nowhere, he basically says. I mean, he concludes with that, that employment policy shouldn't be about internship. It should be strategic, far-sighted, creating real jobs. And I know a lot of people who read my weblog at insideview.ie would say that. But I mean, I was an unpaid intern didn't damage my character at all. Gotta do something, don't we? 
Okay, inside the Sunday Times, they have ideas about what to do about that. Well, it's front page story by Stephen O'Brien says that there's going to be a revolt over the pay reform. So a Fina Gale minister wants to bring in a policy which says if you, you know, work on the weekends, you can uh, you don't get paid extra, but you might get time off in lieu of that pay. Uh, a lot of employment lawyers are saying that's easy to circumvent, and it's a it's a squeeze play on the lower pay. Okay, on my Kindle soon to be on my Kindle, the book by an ex-spy, Christina, Christina Lamb talks to Glenn Carl, and uh, he wrote a book, I think it's called The Interrogator, um, and what's interesting about the new article in the Sunday Times News Review section is uh, the problems he went through before he could propose to his wife, so he had to tell the agency who he's going to get married to, and they had to do a background check. So he was pulled off secure, uh, top secret stuff, until she was cleared six months later. That's happened to me as well in a previous life. My sacred duty as a sex slave, John Harlow, talks to J.C. Dugard. I'm pretty sure, um, I think this is all fabricated. I'm not, I guess that is her. Yeah, anyway, she's been disguised in a TV interview, I know. Got um, kidnapped as an 11-year-old and then spent time in that house growing up, but finally, uh, the book talks all about it. Stolen Life, a memoir, uh, just chilling. I'm sure it's going to be some kind of a, of a, of a film, because it's so, geez, so interesting. Kidnapped, stun gunned, years later, 18 years later? Yeah, 18 years later, got out of that captivity as a sex slave. Here's a man, captive of the kingdom, you could say, Michael Healy Ray, uh, RT Radio did an excellent, excellent take on the letter, the email that was circulated, asking people to, you know, cast a vote for him. Uh, here's what happened, though: more than 2,600 euro was was uh, called out, was paid to a premium phone number to get him as the finalist on Celebrity Go Celebrities Go Wild. And there's this gigantic stink that kicked up last week when he was on all kinds of radio shows with people saying, "Don't you see anything wrong with that?" He's uh, he's paying the bill himself. It's claiming that I'm the only one paying other people's phone bills in Ireland. Yes, you are. Um, we won't look at Gwyneth, except to say that she's modeling uh, that jewelry. You see the jewelry she's modeling? A lot of men don't. Uh, what do you notice that? Notice the jewelry. Anyway, Andrew Shaughnessy doesn't wear any jewelry. Andrew, think of that. If you had some brilliant looking model right next to you there, I bet you attract more subscribers to your Newsweaver program. I like Newsweaver. Andrew is the CEO of Newsweaver.com and uh, predicting good growth in the year ahead. This is a down year, but I'll tell you what, call it what you will. Email delivers, converts, and uh, does it better than her or Facebook for me in arts programs and in recruitment campaigns. Okay, some other things which you need to look at. If you're going to go traveling, men or women, if you're going to go traveling, it's what's on your ear that counts, right? Not the jewelry, but things like the Bose Quiet Comfort for 310 euro. Actually has this active noise canceling, and uh, if I could afford it, I'd buy them. They fit like silk slippers. I'll tell you what, I'll buy them for my wife so she doesn't have to put up my snor snoring. So she can just wear them at night. Jennifer O'Connell might agree with that. Bono might agree with that as well. Jennifer's point, an off-message, the Agenda magazine in the Sunday Business Post is Bono's putting his millions in tax somewhere else, not in Ireland. Jennifer might have might not have a big problem with that because she says, you know, if he put it in Ireland, got taxed in Ireland, they would go to the gambling debts of Irish banks and European banks. And can you really be, blame the man for that? Okay. That's my news report. It went up on Google+. Plus. It might go over to, uh, I'm not sure where it's going to go, YouTube. Uh, if you visit my Flickr photo stream at flickr.com stroke photo stroke Irish eyes, you can see more about my background, my backyard. If you're ever by the place in uh, the N74 in Cashel, you're welcome to stop by, suck down on my free Wi-Fi, or come into the back garden and have a pint. I have six Guinness, six Guinness in the fridge. For anybody who wants to stop by for the American 4th of July. That's my 10-minute report. Bernie on Top Gold on Twitter says, thanks for listening. Bye for now.